today we get to start building the kitchen cabinet. A few videos ago I marked out the cabinet on the walls just to make sure that the door when you opened it wouldn't actually hit the uh, trim around the umbrella or what's now known as the wagon wheel. But today we actually get to start that process and I was thinking about just building and cutting and all the steps that needs to be taken uh, to actually make that cabinet. I mean it's nothing complicated, it's literally just a 24 inch wide cabinet by 26 inches deep um, and you're just like, that's it's not that big of a deal, um, but I started thinking about some characters in scripture that are like two of my favorite characters. So well, like when I get to heaven, like everyone's like, I want to go talk to Paul or I want to go see Peter or, uh, you know, just I want to go talk to Moses or David. Like I want to go when I get to heaven, I want to go talk to these two guys. And, the, and they come from, they're kind of obscure, but they play a, an important role within scripture. Um, I want to go see Bezalel and Aholiab. Now these two guys were responsible for building the tabernacle as after they had come out of uh, the Exodus, they had come out of Egypt. And God says to Moses in, um, in Exodus 31, he said, the Lord said to Moses, see, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God, with the ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahezamach, of the tribe of Dan. And I have given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, and the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is on it, and all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its utensils, and the pure lampstand with all its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand, and the finely worked garments, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons for the service as priests, and for the anointing oil and the fragrance of incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded, you shall do. And so when I read that and I think about these guys and they have to make all of these things, I think, wow, first of all, um, no SketchUp. Like, they didn't have SketchUp. They're not going to lay out the tent. They're not going to lay out the ark in SketchUp. Um, but did they scribble it down? Like, I don't use SketchUp either. Like, I scribble on graph paper. So, like, my plans for this cabinet, it's on graph paper. So I kind of equate or maybe relate a little bit to Bezalel and Aholiab in that way because they didn't have SketchUp and I don't want to learn it so I don't do that way but I started thinking about that and I'm like they don't have power tools do they have a tape measure I have a tape measure it has imperial units on it, it doesn't have cubits I don't even know what a cubit is or how long it is I really enjoy these characters um, and so I often think about these guys when they're making um, just the the tabernacle and the articles for the tabernacle I wonder like did they ever screw up um, did they have to ever have to redo something um, were they ever satisfied like were they there with a chisel, just like fine tuning, like, you know, the cherubim above the ark? You know, I don't know. I just think about these guys. Anyway, so when I'm building this cabinet today, that's what I'm gonna be thinking about. Plus my measurements and don't screw this up because I don't have extra wood. I don't want to go out and buy it. Anymore. Here we go. We're gonna jump in and make this cabinet for the kitchen. I found some four foot by eight foot exotic sanded plywood from Ecuador at Home Depot and cut it down into two 25 and a quarter inch pieces, which make up the sides of the cabinet. After I installed my half inch dado stack, I laid out where my dados would be on one of the sides. I set my fence and started making half inch wide dados that were a quarter inch deep. I made one pass with the board I marked out, then ran the opposing side before I adjusted my fence for the next cut. I couldn't make all the dado cuts on my table saw because my fence can only go out to 30 inches, so I had to find an alternative method to making the remaining dado cuts. I decided to set up a guide and clamp it to the plywood to make the first cut. I set the depth of my skill saw to a quarter inch and ran multiple passes to get the half inch wide groove. I cleaned up the remaining wood with a chisel and it seemed to work well. I wonder how many adjustments Bezalel and Aholiab had to make. I used the off cut pieces of exotic sanded plywood to make the shelves. However, they weren't deep enough so I had to rip some small strips to make up the difference. I drilled some pocket holes and screwed them to the bigger piece to make up the 25 and a quarter inch needed for the shelves. I then ran a bead of glue in the dados and secured the shelves using some brad nails. This completed making the cabinet shell with the final dimensions of 24 inches wide by 25 and a quarter inches deep by 92 inches high. The depth of the cabinet is built three quarters of an inch shy of its final dimension because the stock for the face frame will make up the difference, bringing the final depth to 26 inches. 
I was fortunate enough to have some red and white oak laying around which I used for the rails and styles. I had to rip some of the white oak down and run it through my planer getting it to 3 quarters of an inch thick. With all the thicknesses equal, I cut my styles and rails. I drilled pocket holes in the end of my rail so I could secure them to the styles which makes up the face frame of the cabinet. Before I put the face frame on, I had to do some ironing. Some of the shells will not have the face frame covering them. So in order to cover up the layers of exotic sanded plywood, I added some edge banding which I had laying around from a previous project. I use the same iron on the edge banding as I do on my shirts. I just make sure to put some parchment paper in between the iron and the edge band. This ensures I don't get the glue on my iron. I repeated this process for the other shelves and trimmed the excess banding using the new blade and my utility knife. I'll admit this isn't the best way to do it, but I was too lazy to take my router out of my router table and put the flush trim bit in it, which is what one normally should do. After that, I did some sanding to smooth out the edges. With all of that done, I ran some glue around the edges of the cabinet and used some brad nails to secure the face frame to the cabinet. After that, we applied some primer to the whole thing. We had some Kills 2 gray primer left over from the wainscoting job. So we used that on the outside and Kills 2 white on the inside. Shelly then applied two coats of Lagoon Moss to the outside and some white porch and deck paint to the interior of the cabinet. We moved the cabinet in place and I secured it to the others using two inch screws. From here, we installed the pullout shelving. We still need to install the doors and the drawer face, which I'm currently making. Be sure to hit that subscribe and like button so you can be notified once that video is done. In the meantime, Shelly's excited to put all of our food away in this cabinet after using my old garage shelves for the past eight years.